EN 4.15 describe the clinical features investigations and principles of management of noise induced hearing loss This is a picture of showing some facts about the noise induced hearing loss it's caused due to exposure to excessive noise greater the exposure to excessive noise greater the risk of damage noise induced hearing loss is diagnosed using the CLB guidelines and quantified by using the LCB guidelines it's caused by damage to the hair cells in the inner ear. This is the symbol of deafness and hearing loss. Hearing impairment due to exposure to loud sound is called noise induced hearing loss. Exposure to hazards such as loud noise occur at work associated with hearing loss is called occupational hearing loss. Hearing may deteriorate gradually from chronic repeated noise exposure or suddenly from exposure to impulse noise which is a short high intensity noise such as gunshot loud sound overstimulates delicate hearing cells leading to the permanent injury or death of the cells once lost this way hearing can't be restored in humans largest bur burden of noise induced hearing loss has been through occupational exposures this is a picture of showing how healthy hair cells are present and the damaged hair cells are present. And there is a graph between the percentage of hearing loss present at different age groups. This is, a, this is the picture of showing how the loud sound waves affect the inner hair cells and damages, the, damages it. Clinical features, loss of audibility, distortion or clarity loss, other external symptoms of other external symptoms of an acoustic trauma, tinnitus, a feeling of fullness or pressure in ear, dizziness or vertigo in case of vesticular damages in inner ear. Hearing loss, the first symptom of noise induced hearing loss is difficulty in hearing. The effect of hearing loss on speech perception has two components loss of audibility and distortion or clarity loss. Loss of audibility perceived as an overall decrease in volume, modern aid compensates this loss with amplification. Distortion or clarity loss. Selective frequency loss consonants due to their higher frequency are typically affected first. Sounds such as S and T are often difficult to hear for those with hearing loss affecting clarity of speech. Noise induced hearing loss can affect either one or both ears. Unilateral hearing loss causes problems with directional hearing affecting the ability to localize sound. Permanent threshold shift. Permanent change of hearing threshold intensity to require to detect sound following an event which will never recover. Temporary threshold shift. Temporary change of the hearing threshold, the hearing loss can be recovered after few hours to couple of days, also called auditory fatigue. Permanent threshold shift and temporal threshold shift are measured in decibels. This, this is the graph of temporary threshold shift after a broad point. This is the graph of temporary threshold shift after broad band noise exposure. Tinnitus. Tinnitus is not a disease but rather a symptom. It can be caused by wide variety of circumstances such as hearing loss, obstruction of the ear, head or neck trauma, TMJ condition, sinus or barometric pressure, traumatic brain injury. This is the picture how this is a picture showing how tinnitus and hearing loss are interconnected. About 90% of people with tinnitus also have hearing loss. Tinnitus usually follows the pattern of hearing loss. If you have trouble hearing high frequencies, your tinnitus often have high pitched ringing or hissing. Investigations of noise induced hearing loss. General screening test, tuning fork test by measuring temporary threshold shift. This test can tell how quickly the cells in, a, in your inner ear recover after noise exposure, which can be beneficial for preventing noise induced hearing loss. Hearing deterioration index, pure tone audiometry. 
Hearing Deterioration Index is an indirect method for assessing noise-induced hearing loss. Hearing Deterioration Index is an method for assessing noise-induced hearing loss. Perhaps the sentence at risk of developing noise-induced hearing loss is preferable to be used. Hearing impairment among noise-exposed people can only be confirmed by a cl non-clinical hearing test that is pure tone audiometry. Pure tone audiometry, it is the main hearing test used to identify hearing threshold levels of an individual, en enabling determination of the degree, type and configuration of a hearing loss and thus providing a basis for diagnosis and management. Pure tone audiometry is only used on adults and children old enough to cooperate with the test procedure as it is a subjective behavioral measurement of hearing threshold. This is a picture of showing how pure tone audiometry is done. In pure tone audiometry, both air conduction and bone conduction are tested. Air conduction test. The headphones placed on the ears, right, right ear red color and left ear black color. Testing begins with 1000 Hz and 30 decibels lasting for 1 to 3 seconds with pulsating tones. The response is noted and plotted. Red color for the right ear and black color for the left ear. Bone conduction test. The bone vibrators are placed over the mastoid of testing ear of the subject. The outer noise is masked for the other ear by either white noise, narrow band noise or complex noise. Response of the subject is placed on the graph. Audiogram is a chart that shows the results of a hearing test. It shows how well you are hearing sounds in terms of frequency and intensity or loudness. This is the picture of showing audiogram. Principles of management of noise induced hearing loss. In principles of no management of noise induced hearing loss, check, identify, assess, control. These four play a major role. Check. Complete checks and audits to verify effectiveness of controls. Identify. Recognize noise sources and activities. Assess. Complete a noise risk exposure assessment. Control. Identify and implement controls to eliminate or reduce exposure. Noise induced hearing loss can be prevented through the use of simple, widely available and economical tools. This includes but is not limited to the personal noise reduction through the use of ear protection such as earplugs and earmuffs. Uh, we should also educate and uh, could be, should be done hearing conservation programs. Frequency modulation system can enhance the use of hearing aids and overcome the effects of poor listening conditions. Prognosis are improved with the recent advancements in digital hearing aid technology such as directional microphones, open fit hearing aids and more advanced algorithms. A systemic review conducted by the American Academy of Audiology Task Force on the health related quality of life, benefits of amplification in adults found the use of hearing aids to increase the quality of life. How an audiologist improve your quality of life? With proper selection and fitting of advanced hearing aid devices such as a surgically implanted bone anchored hearing aid Baha that transfers sound to your normal ear through your skull, a cross hearing aid that transmits sound wirelessly from the ear with poorer hearing to the normal hearing ear, a trans hearing aid with bone vibrator that transmits sound from your poorer ear to your normal ear, a transcranial hearing aid that is another way to transmit sound through your skull to your normal ear. As, as we previously discussed, uh, we should not provide them hearing aids, we should also counsel them and we should also make hearing conservation programs. Types of counseling, informational, patient or family learns about hearing loss, hearing assistance, technologies communication etc. Rational acceptance. Patient or family learns how to manage hearing loss and communication difficulties. Adjustment counseling. Patient or family works through the negative feelings regarding hearing loss and decreased sense of worth. 
hearing conservation program in hearing conservation programs these are the key points and they play a key role in hearing conservation program and they work like a cycle noise or risk assessment eliminate risk or establish controls provide hearing protection programs information and training for workers and the representatives health surveillance and audiometric testing review controls and risk assessment thank you